Oh, All right, crap. ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Razor Mini Madness Day 3. Uh, we do have the last set of the round of eight coming up here. Team DK facing off against Ehome. This is our second introduction for the sake of you VOD viewers, so let's get right to it. Kawa, once again, how are you feeling today, buddy? I'm feeling... Now I'm feeling good. No, <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't even know. I said at first I was, like, super tired because, you know, this is, like, a 6 a.m. tournament yeah. for me. Woke up at, like, 5 to try and get ready, so That's we're finally here again. Yes, exactly right. That is dedication right there, my friend. But we are here ready to rock and roll. Uh, Team DK for facing off against Ehome, another best of three. This is the only series on the schedule today. So seeing as the picks are well underway, let's start with the bands. DK going to start us off with bands on Broodmother, Lycan, and Leshrac. And E Home over on the dire side, gonna go ahead and throw out bands on Rubik, Naga Siren, and Dark Seer. Any thoughts about the bands here, Kawa? Uh, everything pretty standard. I think both teams doing their homework right there. They know a lot of the heroes that the other teams are like really, really good with. Specifically, um, I'm looking specifically at the Rubik and Broodmother, but uh, both of these uh, teams, both being Chinese, uh, really don't want to go up against the Rubik, as I mentioned it before in previous casts, just how chaotic he is at kind of throwing the other team for a loop. It's just way too difficult to deal with that Rubik. So, you know, just kind of some standard bands here yeah. for both of the teams in terms of what they yeah. don't want to deal with well, and, you know, what they favor. The one that jumps out at me is that Leshrac. Uh, I, I mean, only because there are still so many powerful heroes left on the board. We see DK has already picked up Nature's Prophet, Morphling, and Shen. And seeing those three heroes, I'm, I have my jaws kind of on the floor like, wow, Prophet and Shen on the same team. This is going to be fun. They're going to be taking out some yeah. towers. Um, so, you know, Lesh, although very irritating, slightly easier to deal with than Prophet or Chen, in my humble opinion. Yeah, definitely. But, you know, they're they're aware of King J. King J actually really likes to play on Ehoma, uh, that Lashrek. And he's also, of course, one of the most dynamic heroes in Dota 2 right now, which is probably why he's among the top heroes to be picked because he's just so useful at all points in the game so you know they're just like oh i don't want to deal with that right now so they kind of just take him out as the last portion of the first dra or first banning phase i should say for dk so pretty standard stuff so far yep. so far and of course the picks here for e home be lone druid tinker and venomancer so they're off to sort of an interesting start and we'll see how this last ban finishes off here we have windrunner and enchantress uh, looks like a ban on Invoker, and uh, one last left for Ehome. Any thoughts about the Ehome roster? It's interesting they picked up Tinker so early. We've seen Tinker a few times, but it seems only towards the tail end of the draft, and uh, never quite so early. Uh, it's looking like he's going to be really, really solid as a defense. Well, not a defensive support. That's actually going to be Venomancer's role, especially going up against Nature Prophet and Chen. They're both um, on DK, going to be able to do quite a bit of pushing early on. So Venomancer just going to kind of try and quell that, just kind of throw them off a little bit, throw with those Plague Wards in particular. You also have the Tinker, though, which is Marth, which there. Yeah. I'm kind of tongue-tied here, with his March of the Machines. He's going to be able to probably max that up. I a lot, of, um, a lot of Chinese teams will actually go for that March of the Machines first, mm -hmm. especially when you've got crazy push heroes like they have right now on DK. I think he's going to want to go for that rather than the Laser Rocket, but it's kind of going to depend here on who's going to be going middle. I also wouldn't be surprised if DK here picks up a Crystal Maiden because they did snag that Morphling. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be a really nice combo for them since the next portion of the draft is about to start. Yeah, definitely. And although DK's lineup looks very scary to start things off, I think Ehome did a pretty good job of trying to counter that, as you mentioned with the Tinker and Venomancer. Mm -hmm. They also have Lone Druid, who's going to give them a little bit of pushing power as well to sort of at least balance out the Prophet and uh, Chen, or uh, somewhat. Uh, so I, I like that choice. Tidehunter, going to be picked up by DK. Very well could still go for that Crystal Maiden with their last pick. Definitely. Yeah, actually, that could set them up for a really, really nice... Um... Well, it could set him up for a tri lane. It could depend whether or not it's defensive or offensive. But, you know, just in case someone wants to kind of roll with the Morphling, it will depend. Nature's Prophet maybe ending up inside of the middle lane right there. Chen, of course, jungling it up. It might be a pseudo, pseudo tri lane up. Mm -hmm. Up, I wouldn't say top, but that is the Radiant, so I got that confused. So probably going to be bottom. So, you know, just going to be playing it safe and stuff like that. Will be interesting to see what DK is going to further go with that. And like you said, the Lone Druid is going to be really solid for Ehome because they're going to have that early pushing power from the bear with that siege damage from him once he gets level 4 on the bear. So that's going to be extremely nice for them. 
as yeah, well. Absolutely. And one of the problems with uh, Ehome's roster right now, if, at least at the moment with only three heroes on the board, is they're, they're lacking some of that just team fight synergy. They have three great heroes in very specific niches right now. But if you look at mm -hmm. DK's roster, you can see how their team fight potential is lining up. I think Tidehunter was really a great addition. Yeah, there's also not a lot of reliance stuns here for both of these teams. Obviously, yeah. we're going to have Chen going to have that. In, well, he's going to have those three creeps. He'll have the potential of having an ensnare. He's going to be able to get the Ursa Warrior with that clap and et cetera, et cetera. But now that I'm checking out Night Stalker here, this is going to be really, really interesting because now this is going to require that Ehome go on the offensive extremely early. And it's going to be cool to see because he's going to be going up against a couple of squishy heroes here, Chen and Nature's Prophet in particular. Mm -hmm. I want to see how he's going to be able to do that and if he's going to be kind of playing safe yeah. early on. Well, and we talked about Crystal Maiden being potential last pick, and uh, that is definitely a squishy hero that Night Stalker will have, or has potential to have a field day with, uh, I guess I should mm -hmm. say. But, you know, the last time we saw Night Stalker, it really didn't work out. So, I mean, do you think he's a good pick here, or sort of uh, a wild card pick from Ehome? Um, I mean, does he fit into judging, their roster, I guess, is really what I'm getting at? Judging by the heroes that they have on DK right now, he actually is going to be looking pretty pretty solid especially with the lone druid and the tinker that's going to be really really nice once they kind of like Ooh. grab all of them inside of a team fight they're going to actually have to do it like i wouldn't say five man dota but you know it's going to be really interesting to see i think night stalker is going to be solid here because they're going to be able to kind of roll down all of those supports that they have right now it's going to be harder though they got a storm spirit right now on dk so that's going to be nice kite wise as well with that morphling but still i think night stalker may be able to do really really well here at first he's going to kind of need to farm even during the first night just a little bit extra just to grab a couple of those support I not support items but core items the urn mm -hmm. get grabbing his treads and stuff so just want to ensure that the early game is good for him probably going to be seeing that and then the final pick is going to be disruptor interesting so storm spirit and disruptor the last two picks two that were yet to see so far in this tournament uh, if i believe uh, recall correctly and uh, i'm actually really excited to see storm spirit and again we i keep going back to that crystal maiden because i was very confident that that was going to be their last pick how do you feel about Storm Spirit over CM in this scenario? Um, I think it's pretty good. He's going to be able to be more of a solid middle hero for Team DK. Also, mm -hmm. it's going to be... Oh, yeah, Super is going to be playing him right there, so that's pretty cool standard stuff. We're going to be seeing him probably go up against that Tinker, so it's kind of going to depend. He'll be able to do quite a bit, but it's, like I said, going to depend on what... Um, MMY is going to want to go for early on. Is he going to be doing the laser rocket or that March of the Machines? And honestly, I really think the March of the Machines is going to be way, way better for him here because they got the Chen and the uh, well, the Nature's Prophet. And we have a pause here. Yep, a pause to start things off here in game number one. Of course, it is a best of three series, guys. Just to reiterate once again, we have at least one more game coming up after this, but only one best of three on the docket for the day. If you want to check out the brackets, you can go over to itsgosu.com slash game slash Dota 2, or just head over to itsgosu.com and click on that Dota 2 link there on the main page, uh, and it will take you right to the brackets. The event is listed on the side panel. Also, one of the things that we keep kind of forgetting to mention is there are tickets available for this event. If you want to in the client, you can spend a dollar ninety nine. Pick up a ticket and you can spectate uh, in-game. We are broadcasting in the client um, and you can of course get access to all of those replays and the other fun features that come along with purchasing tickets. Yeah, so since this is kind of... Oh wait, I think he just got back in right now. We should be seeing the go-ahead. I was going to say let's do a little bit of an introduction. All right. Let's go ahead and do it. We'll start off with Team DK down here in the Radiant side. We've got Zippo going to be playing the Tide Hunter, Burning going to be doing some carry action on Mr. Morphling, Long DD going to be in control of the Nature's Prophet, Super in charge of the Storm Spirit, and ROTK going to be rocking the chin. Inside the top lane for Ehome, we're going to be seeing MMY going mid with that Tinker. We also have Lamb. Actually, it's going to depend. This is going to be kind of cool. I was going to say, hey, Tinker, sweet, going to be going into the middle of course, but they also have the ability to send the Night Stalker there, but we might be seeing him go bottom here. Lamb going to be playing that Night Stalker. We have King J as the Venomancer. We have Cat, <laughs> Cupid Cat, if you want to call him <laughs> that, but right now I guess he's Selen, Selen Goddess's Cat. Going to be on Lone Druid, and finally QQQ as Disruptor. 
Very interesting. Yes, that I'm sure that name will trip me up a little bit here. And of course, he's playing Lone Druid, the one hero that has been tripping me up a little bit. So that's going to be a whole lot of fun up in the top lane <laughs> yeah. as uh, we get this game started. But yeah, you were talking about tri lanes and kind of pseudo tri lanes in the bottom, and it looks like that's how things may start. King Jay and Lamb going to be in the lane, and uh, QQQ just kind of roaming around. We'll see where Disruptor ends up. Furion going to do just a pinch of scouting here. Yeah, we also have like ROTK here inside of the jungle with Burning, and then also Tidehunter is going to be down here. So yeah, it's looking like they're going to probably run a defensive tri lane here for DK. So that's actually going to work very, very nice for him. But that means that, yeah, Night Stalker, King J, and probably QQQ going to be going down here, which is going to leave Solo up top cat on the lone druid so this is going to be interesting mm -hmm. i really want to see how lone druid's going to be able to try and farm this up depending on what they're going to be sending up top with dk yeah it looks like it's going to be furion who's going to end up there i think super is kind of committed to mid so we're going to have a tinker versus storm spirit mid lane which should be pretty interesting probably i want to say kind of a break even lane but uh, we'll see again it kind of depends on what build tinker goes for but yeah up in the top we'll have the lone druid facing off against mr furion here in control uh, by Long DD. So this top lane is definitely interesting. Two heroes that uh, I guess my my old school bias is like, oh yeah, two junglers going head to head here in the top yeah. lane. Who who do you think we should expect to come out ahead between a uh, Lone Druid and uh, Furion? I honestly think Lone Druid's going to have a pretty easy time going up against Long DD, but it's kind of going to depend here. We may see a little bit of action inside of the bottom lane very, very soon here. Not entirely sure, but honestly, I think the last hits, the CS for Cat's going to be pretty solid. Mm -hmm. and I would agree. I mean, the bear is just so powerful, especially against Furion. I mean, any kind of ranged hero, it's going to be a little bit difficult for him to last hit against kind of the two heroes up in this lane as it may be with that spirit bear. Uh, but we'll keep mm -hmm. an eye on the creep score and see how that lane unfolds. I do agree with you, good sir, about this bottom lane. They are itching for a kill. They're going to come over and uh, take over the pull. I don't know if they're going to throw a ward down. And uh, let's see. Oh, there is a ward here in the inventory of Disruptor. So they may opt to ward the pull, or they may just leave it as kind of like bait here. It looks like that's what they're really trying to do. Bait somebody to come in and clear that out and pick up a kill. But, of course, Zippo and Burning, just a little bit too smart for that. Yeah, definitely. I mean, probably going to be seeing that ward thrown up relatively soon. It would be kind of good for them in this situation. But they're not really scared about it anyway, because this is a trial lane. They're going to be super aggressive, trying to take out this Tier 1 tower very, very soon. So mm -hmm. it's kind of going to depend right now inside of the middle lane we got storm spirit doing pretty well against mmy and it looks like he is going to be going for that laser rocket build here oh, to deal okay. with super so that's going to be pretty nice pickup for him going to be doing very very well yeah. early on yeah that should be very interesting so talk to me a little bit about storm spirit and how he fits in uh, to this roster and just this game in general i mean should we expect him to kind of take over and play a little bit more of a carry role as this game continues if farm allows yeah, definitely. Especially if he's able to get that CS to give him the Bloodstone early. He's going to be able to go around and mostly gank, though. He's going to be more of a kind of... Uh, not initiate... Yeah, be initiator ganker, but it's going to depend if he's going to be able to deal with MMY here. And it's going to be tough because he's not going to be letting him do that. He's going to be relentless with all that pressure. So right. that will be kicking around... Uh, I'd, be, I'd say kicking around the 20-minute mark. The second night time, we'll be seeing him kind of start to getting in that upswing yeah and you know looking at this try lane night stalker's farm is a little bit underwhelming again here he's sitting nine and four which isn't bad by any means but storm spirit is 13 and three in that solo mid lane so by no means free farm for lamb down here they're still yet to ward the pull we see it's going to be pulled again by zippo and it's just making it difficult for this night stalker to pick up any farm i guess sort of disappointing that he's not really farming best in the game nor have they secured a kill in this lane so far they've invested a lot as far as the amount of experience they've been missing for this try lane um mm -hmm. and they really haven't gotten much from it although so we may see some action here. Zippo going to move out. Eh, just going to get harassed back a little bit and whittle his way back to the tower. So, yeah, try lane a little bit underwhelming to start things off, I think. Yeah, there'll just be a little bit of tagging damage here. Going to continue to pull constantly. Uh, looks like that wave is actually going to be brought in. Unfortunately, it's not double stack, so that's a little bit too bad. We see the Chen right here, ROTK, going to be going for... Yeah, going to be going for that creep right now. I believe he has that Warlord. So pretty soon here, we're going to be seeing him like just kind of jump in. And that's going to be pretty scary. Inside the top lane right now, Long DD getting entangled, unfortunately, and taking a lot of damage oh. right here from Cat. Yeah, and this could end up into something. There is a Sprout available, so he might be able to do something. The Bear, unfortunately, does not have any boots right now. 
uh, nor does Lone Druid for that matter, so you're not going to be able to chase him down. But yeah, looking at the farms at the top here, Lone Druid actually leading the way with 19 creep kills, and Furion only with 9. So it seems you were right, good sir. Furion going to be at a bit of a disadvantage. A bit of a smoke gank here coming in the mid lane. Zippo and ROTK hiding about the side. Looks like they want to make something happen here against MMM or MMY. <laughs> Yeah, and they're probably going to be able to get it here. There goes the Gush. Going to be able to just bring him in there. Lots of nuke damage, and I believe this is going to be first blood yep, and there for ROTK. Is. Very nice. Very nicely done. Chen going to get that bonus gold, and um, yeah, this is a nice straightforward gank that's going to be huge for Storm Spirit. Now Super is going to have a much easier time in this mid lane. I know, unfortunately, he didn't pick up that uh, extra bonus gold, but still, it's going to make mid lane a lot easier for him now. Yeah, definitely. So that's going to allow, yeah, Super here to just kind of work his way up at an advantage inside the middle lane right now. He's still got that DD rune, so just going to try and get as much CS as possible continuously. MMY going to have to be very, very careful, though. They do have a lot of vision, too, but that smoke gank was very, very clutch here mm -hmm. for Ehome. Absolutely. A great time. Oh, actually, sorry, that was DK. <laughs> uh, yeah, DK, DK setting up the smoke gank, yeah. But, uh, yeah, it, it's, uh, it was a very solid effort that early on to just get a little bit of an edge. And it's one of those things you don't really expect it, but, um, you know, once you just like, oh, man, probably should have should have seen that coming a little bit. Bottom lane was missing. Yeah, they're not in the jungle. Uh, yeah. st still, Night Stalker, uh, his farm's starting to come back a little bit now. He's uh, kind of... In the upper portion of the pack here, sitting with 20 CS, it's, it's not bad. It's just one of these things where he, he needs to have this good early start so this first night uh, is effective and not just a big waste of time. Yeah, he's got a couple of his core items right now. He's got the urn, so definitely going to be expecting to see some early kills come out for that. But he's only level 3, so unfortunately he doesn't really have any levels in that hunter in the night, which is imperative for the first night time if he wants to get mm -hmm. some of those early kills. And, oh... Up in the top lane, Lone Druid going to be able to finish, oh god, pardon me, uh, finish off Furion. And I imagine it was just a root proc. The bear still, <laughs> the, or, the bear actually has an orb of venom now, so that's going to make uh, shutting down Furion a little bit easier, and it looks like um, that's all it takes. Yeah, that was really good. I, I didn't catch that, unfortunately. I was trying to, like, catch things inside of the bottom lane. But unfortunately, yeah, Cat right now doing so well. And that's what you don't want to have happen. So this first night, I really think that DK is going to want to try and pressure a little bit up in this top lane here. Yeah. Otherwise, things are kind of going to get out of control. You don't want to give Lone Druid this early advantage. Otherwise, that Radiance is going to be happening very quick. Oh, and here we go. Yeah, here he's going to get engaged on the ultimate from Super to start it off. And I think Cat is destined to fall here. Or is he? Not much mana left on these two heroes. Uh, a couple auto attacks. All right, he is going to go down. I was worried Storm Spirit might not have enough mana to finish him off. Uh, but alas, Storm Spirit do I did find the mana. Super going to walk home with the kill. And speak of the devil there, Kawa, exactly what you were just talking about. Perfect. Yeah, like that was a really good pickup by Super as well as Long DD. So now they're just going to half health the tower immediately. And this is exactly what they need to be doing. As well as Chen inside of the bottom lane. I really think that... Uh, they're going to need to start pressuring some towers really soon here, especially yeah. since it's the first night. But, you know, you got to be careful because that Night Stalker is going to be on the prowl. Lamb still not leaving the lane quite yet. He got one level of the Hunter in the night, so he's just going to wait a little bit longer before he goes on a rampage. And this top tower may very well fall. Lone Drew going to port back in. He's going to go for the deny, and it's not going to happen. Super actually going to be able to pick up that tower last hit. So a little bit surprised to see that top tier 1 get sacrificed with really no defense whatsoever. But I guess... Uh, there wasn't really much they could do, so well done by Long DD again. Uh, now winning this top lane, it's going to make things a lot easier. It is a little bit of a problem, though. Pushing in the short lane first, that's going to open up a lot of space for Lone Druid to farm right here. You can kind of static farm this lane, and um, mm -hmm. it's going to be hard for them to pressure him here for the next few minutes. That's going to be a lot of farm coming his way. Yeah, check out the CS right now for uh, E-Home. That's actually uh, look at you, a nice Night little Stalker. Comeback. Yeah, look at that. Leading the way now. That is definitely good news for E-Home. Maybe this is going to be Lamb's time to start to shine. I have a feeling RTK is going to be waiting for that mech before he starts moving around and pressuring these towers. I, I just get that vibe that he's a little more comfortable playing a little bit more passively early on, getting that mech, and then like flipping that switch and going super aggressive. Yeah, the thing with that, though, is that that's going to allow... Um, 
a lot of room for eHome to kind of get away with a little extra, like, I guess you could say uh, ganking, and they're just going to uh -oh. go for it here. Yeah, yeah. ROTK, man. You are going to hang around in the danger zone just a little bit too long. At nighttime, you need to just be a little bit more cautious. His team's going to come in, though. Super's going to come, and now Lamb in a little bit of trouble. Looks like ROTK very well may fall, thanks to Disruptor. Yeah, he's going to go down. Lamb going to go down. His burning comes sliding in with that wave form. Very nicely done. Now we see the rest of this dire side. Uh, on the defensive, Super actually getting very aggressive here to try and buy his team some time to make this engage happen, but the rest of the team is not with him. Burning's the only one here, and down in the bottom, oh, that's going to be Disruptor who gets taken out, so Zippo as well as Long DD going to be able to finish him off. Are they going to be able to finish off this Venomancer, though? A couple of Chen Creeps trying to make something happen. Looks like the net from the war or Ensnare from the Warlord is not going to be enough, so it looks like it'll end as a, a two-for-one exchange. Yeah, that was really interesting how it ended up right now. Burning kind of swapping into the bottom lane now trying to get some of that extra farm he can't really do a whole lot at this point i mean you can be a little bit aggressive as a morphling early on but when you've got the lineup of ehome right there with that nice stalker with the tinker going to be able to blind you completely prevent any right clicks from being useful it's just kind of going to be difficult mm -hmm. to try and engage like that so dk yeah. right now at least they were able to like win that fight right there two for one like you mentioned but still they got to be careful they got to still pressure some towers really early here i think yeah the bottom lane bottom or middle is going to be really solid for them within the next like minute or two this chen really needs to start doing something yeah. and he's trying but there's the march of the machines already for mmy and it's maxed i would whoa okay so this is weird there is no sound in game yeah, I saw him say, unfortunately, I can't really troubleshoot while we're while we're in game. It should, I have my little thing popping. Oh, you know what it probably is? Let me, pardon me, guys. I do apologize, but I think, no, I'm going to open mic. Um, I, say something real quick. Uh, uh, let's see. I'll just start yeah, analyzing MMY. My here. bars are going up, so we can troubleshoot after this game, but as far as I can tell, things should be working on my end. So if you're uh, a, an angry viewer who was uh, watching in the client, you're now in stream. My apologies. Not sure what the issue is, and we'll check it out um, after this game. So, uh, it looks like we missed a kill while I was kind of tabbed out here. Night Stalker was killed somewhere, somehow. That was in the bottom line, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it was. Okay, so, uh, that's really unfortunate, actually. Did, did, you, did you catch the action? Can you fill us in? Uh, he was just a little bit overcommitted past the lane where he should have been. They did have a ward inside the jungle, but, you know, there was just way too much disable. They were able to pick him off. This tier 1 is immediately going down now, so that's really, really solid for DK. They need to continue this momentum. We'll check. Looks good on my end. Awesome. Yeah, so this is unfortunately going to go down. All those creeps, the wards from Venomancer, and I just want to jump back mm -hmm. if this action is going to kind of die down to... Tinker's build because he did actually go for the March of the Machines earlier. I was like, oh, okay, so he's maxing out the laser and the rocket. He went for the level two of the laser, the oh, one wow, level of rocket, but then immediately we didn't kind of like follow up <laughs> with Tinker for the rest of the mid lane. He yeah. did get max on March, so that's going to be super solid up against the pushing of DK, but it's kind of late here in the bottom lane. That That's actually really funny because I looked at him at level three and was like, all right, I guess he is going to commit to laser heat seeking, and that was the worst time to stop looking at Tinker because he went all next four in March of the Machine. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. That is uh, interesting. So that, that's nice, though. MMY going to fall, in, sort of go a build that we were both talking about that seems to make a lot of sense here. So that's, um, well, all else uh, makes me feel good. So um, anyhow, DK with a nice lead. Let's take a look at the gold graph, see uh, where things lie. A nice 4K gold in favor of Team DK at the moment and uh, 3,500 XP or so, something like that. So they've got a nice little lead set for themselves now. About 12 minutes in, this Morphling still kind of behind in the farm. He's definitely at the bottom of the pack with only 27 CS, uh, which is a, a little bit uh, upsetting compared to the Lone Druid sitting at 65 and, of course, uh, Tinker sitting at 60. Um, but I, I think the important thing to note for Burning here is that he's 1-0-1, oh, whereas Night Stalker is sitting 0-2-1. Oh, so that's going to make up for some of that farm disparity there. Yep, they also brought in Lone Druid here in the bottom lane, so this is already looking like Ehome going to want to try and push in this tier 1 tower just as DK took out their tier 1 in bottom lane. And we have a pause right now, so this may give like a second here. Oh, no, never mind. <laughs> Looks like go goes. Well, that's good. No complaints about a short pause, to be perfectly frank, my friend. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Spent too many an hour sitting in pauses trying to find interesting things to talk about in my days of casting. Oh, my. At least we practiced that, though. So yes. We're, we're that. I, I'm, I'm a veteran pause caster. That's... So I need to change my title to so, Alright, we are going to have this unpause. But yeah, Lone Druid going to come down here. It looks like E-Home is really going to get serious about pres uh, pressuring this Tier 1 tower. 
uh, which they could have uh, some opportunity here. We see a few of the uh, long DD, a little bit out of position, of course, Furion uh, can port in at any time. So they're starting to converge. Chen kind of tucked away in the jungle here. We'll see what Ehome does. They're playing this very cautiously. It looks like they wanted to push, but seeing as the rest of the Radiant team is missing, they're just going to back it up and play a little more defensive. Yeah, inside of the middle lane, Long DD going to take advantage of the position of Ehome, going to just kind of whittle down that tier 1 tower inside of the middle lane. The last tier 1 actually for Ehome, so that's pretty solid. Glyph gets activated right now, so that's just going to force the rest of Ehome to kind of work their way back into the middle lane. And now we actually see, uh, we see Tinker here inside of the jungle just kind of stacking here on the Ancients, trying to get as many as possible. There was a rune, or sorry, not a rune, but rather a sentry that was kind of blocking vision and the stacks inside of the Ancients, which I didn't point out earlier, but that was actually really solid from DK. But now they just kind of let it go, and I really think Tinker is going to try and take advantage of that. Yeah, well, he's certainly off to a good start on that front. But right now, I mean, this is the reason we see Prophet banned, as, as if we needed any more evidence uh, for why Furion is a ban-worthy hero. But he can do exactly that. Oh, your whole team's in the bottom lane? Great. I'm going to appear in the mid and just pressure this tower. And even though he didn't really kill this tower, and it feels like he didn't do that much, he pulled that push from the bottom lane, and now Ehome's just going to rotate to the mid. The glyph going to be used. We'll see if this tier 1 gets any kind of defense. It looks like DK may choose just to sacrifice it. Yeah, it's looking like that is going to be going down. So, oh, Super here kind wow. of in an awkward position. E Home playing so defensively. I'm surprised they didn't move up to pressure that tower. That's going to give DK an opening. Zippo going to start with the Ravage and all the rest of the spells coming out. It's looking like a slaughter in favor of DK. Disruptor going to try and make something happen, but it's not going to be enough. It's going to be the a three for nil exchange, and it's not over yet. Super going to ult forward. Now Lamb going to be in big trouble. He's going to fall faster than butter to a warm knife, and it looks like they're going to be able to get four hero kills as well as a tier one tower with a crazy good engage from that Tidehunter. The, oh, wow. That was really solid from DK, especially being able to like pick up that Ravage, picking up all the heroes on Ehome. Not all of them, of course, but like at least three from what I was seeing. And now they're going to pressure him inside of the middle lane. They're going to take down this Tier 2 tower, and there's nothing that Ehome's going to be able to do about it. Yeah, it is really unfortunate. Tower's certainly going to fall. And I'm still sort of confused about what Ehome's plan was right there. They sort of pressured the tower and then backed off at a really weird time. If they were going to run, they needed to commit to running a lot sooner so that what happened wouldn't happen. Or they should have just committed to at least finishing off the tower then taking that fight in the uphill. Instead, they just got totally caught in that half retreat, half commit mode uh, and just bit him in the ass for lack of a better term. Yeah, Tidehunter definitely punished him for that one. So was able to get off a very, very nice Ravage Zippo. Great job for him inside the top lane now, Long DD. He actually got his Midas. So he's going to be able to be super greedy this oh, wow. game. Going to be going for most likely an Ag Scepter here. It looks like with that Staff of Wizardry, of course. So top lane is going to continue to get pressured. Meanwhile, inside the middle lane, Eam Home still have their sights on that Tier 1. And they are going to at least be able to take it out. Woo! Yeah, Storm Spirit going to go for an eye attempt there, so the little auto attack flying at the last second. Um, but a, a, a noble effort from Ehome. Not sure they needed all five to finish off that tower without the glyph, but uh, it was killed nonetheless. That team fight, though, that we just saw brings up that point, or at least uh, reopens the point that I brought up when we were uh, had like one or two heroes left. I was like, you know, the roster from Ehome looks pretty good if you look at the individual heroes, but where's that team fight synergy? Where's that sure stun, really strong initiation power? And right there we saw really the advantage that DK has in this draft. A good Ravage means a really solid initiation. Ehome just doesn't have an initiator nearly as powerful as that. And uh, what do they do if they get caught in a Ravage? You know, what can they do to prevent that that massacre we just saw from happening again? Exactly. It's it's rough. I mean, even looking at Lamb right now, he's 0-4, and, and you Ooh. you cannot have that when you're a Night Stalker in this game. They have a really strong lineup counter push wise on E Home, like I mentioned before with the Venomancer with the mm -hmm. with the Tinker, but really it just hasn't been working out for him in this game and we see just a huge advantage kill wise for DK as well as Tower. So already this early game well in favor of DK. It's like Night Stalker really needs to start making kills happen, especially at the second night time. Yeah, and it's looking like um, 
the, the, the big difference in gold is starting to show in the inventories. You know, just looking at some core items starting to get picked up. Storm Spirit getting very close to that Orchid. Uh, Tinker has picked up his Boots of Travel, but that's really one of the only big item pickups they've made. Other than that, it's just uh, Phase Boots uh, and, and the Urn, I, I guess we should uh, mention as well. Uh, looks like Prophet is getting closer to that Scepter. He's now picked up the Ogre Club, as you mentioned, already has those Hands of Midas. Uh, and mm -hmm. Chen has had Mech for uh, quite some while, I would imagine. So, uh, yeah, that's that's going to be the Orchid. And it looks like Burning going to be doing uh, the, the shotgun build here. Yeah, I would I would definitely agree to that one, especially wanting to take out the Lone Druid or the Night Stalker because they hit or right-click for so much damage. So mm -hmm. pretty standard here from, from Burning, going to be able to pick that one up. And, yeah, I wish that... I wish the Stinker was going to be able to do more with some of that split pushing or the counter pushing at least here from Long DD up in the top lane. The tier 2 tower is looking like it's going to go down unfortunately and I think Ehome's going to try and go for a trade for the tier 1 in the bottom but man, you cannot race against a Chen. So they're going to try and punish him for this one. The tier 3 is actually going to get pressured right now and that's actually going to force Ehome to TP back here yeah. and still the half, half life right now for the tier 1 in the bottom lane. I am shocked that Ehome even considered this here. I mean, they're going to go for a pushing race against a team that has Furion and Shen together. I mean, Venomance is going to come back, but I mean, regardless, that that tier two at the top was almost dead, and uh, this one at the bottom, the tier one at the bottom lane, still had a good bit of health, and Burning alone was able to keep it alive. That was a huge misplay from Ehome, handing over a free tier two, wasting all that time, and then wasting the ports back to defend this tower. And even the tier 3 took a nice 500 hit points of damage or so, uh, which is certainly a victory for Team DK. Mm -hmm. I, I'm i completely, like, losing my memory right here. Did I just say that MMY not going to really be able to do any of that counter-pushing because he has to be in the team fights? Like, he needs to be in all those with his March of the Machines to do damage, mm -hmm. so he can't be expected to just TP around with those bots to be able to try and push back in those lanes. He's really, really needed in all these team fights right now, especially since DK has such a huge advantage. Yeah, and oh man, you want to see a scary chart. Press E for a second and look at the hero levels. It is all green at the top, then all oh. red at the bottom. That is scary business right now. Um, and wow, that makes me feel a lot more negative uh, about this game here in, in terms of through the eyes, through E-Home right now. 10 to 2, 20 minutes in, it doesn't feel so bad, but wow. They are just in big trouble. We're going to see Super here pressure the mid lane. They did finally take out that tier 1 in the bottom. Super doing a nice bit of damage as we see Tinkerport back. And uh, I thought Furion and Chen may try and pressure that top lane, but it uh, looks like they're just going to rotate here to the mid. It's looking like DK may get kind of serious about breaking into the base here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Super is doing a good job right now, just keeping the pressure inside the middle lane, as well as Furion up top, keeping those lanes pushed in as much as possible. Lamb going to actually chase Super a little bit, puts oh. the Orchid on him right now, and going to push him immediately with that one. Huge Ravage goes up, and that's going to mean Super gets the kill on Lamb. Ultimate goes up for King. Oh yeah, this is just going to be a massacre. Three very easy kills for DK right there. And uh, oh. they should be able to at least take out this tier 3 tower, if not severely cripple these racks. Uh, and we'll see what they do. Uh, if, they, if they port out or if they end up split pushing, it looks like Furion is just going to port back to the base. And he's going to have it up here in just a couple of seconds. So I wouldn't be surprised if he goes straight for the top and they try some kind of split pushing action. Nope, they're just going to back it on up. Very short respawn timer still as everyone on E-Home is still very low level. That is one redeeming quality about uh, being this far behind early on. Yeah. You do respawn very quickly and it makes it difficult to take out your racks. So, um, you know, again, although DK very far ahead, it's still very difficult for them to actually break into the base. Yeah, they are going to take out this tier 2 in bottom pretty yep. much. They're setting up the remnant here in sight of the jungle, just giving them a little bit of extra sight, just in case they go and try and do something a little bit funny here on E-Home. And they look like they are going to be taking out this tier 2 uncontested. There goes a Gale. Yep, and uh, they need to be a little careful here. Zippo does not have that Ravage, as we saw in that last team fight. So they are just going to back it up. I'm sure they'll wait for that very valuable cooldown. Tidehunter has also picked up a Blink Dagger. So that's going to even further complement the, their initiation power again. Uh, a, a huge item pickup here. I mean, Blink Dagger on Tide is a big item pickup in any game. But here in particular, I mean, DK just has such an initiation advantage. If Ehome gets caught, they just have no way to really reset and counter-initiate that fight. You know, if they had a Naga or something, then they'd really be mm -hmm. onto something here but there's just no way for them to win team fights if they get initiated on um, unless there's some other huge extraneous factor you know they have a token or something but <laughs> yeah no you know it's just no. it's looking looking a little bit dark here for our dire team 
Although, yeah. Long DD in the top lane, he may that, uh, give them a little taste of victory here. He's going to try and pour it out. Are they going to be able to finish him off? No. <laughs> oh, he... What? What, what was oh, that? Oh, the glimpse. Oh, okay. That, wow, that was a clutch move from uh, <laughs> Disruptor right there. Yeah, that was disorienting. Seeing him pour it out, then instantly come back. I was like... Did Furion just port two inches to the left? <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the worst TP. Yeah. The, <laughs> no, the glimpse, man. Yeah. That was really clutch by QQQ. Yeah, beautifully done. So they are going to get a, a little taste of triumph there as they do take out Furion. Nice little gank in the top lane. But yeah, uh -oh. so at what cost, though, Kawa? This mid lane going to get pressured super with a double damage rune. This tower going to fall very quickly. Yeah, it's looking like they're going to go for it. And once again, trying to do kind of a kind of a race up in the top lane to take out the tier one, but still. Oh, super going to go straight in, and that's going to be an overcommitment. Was hoping to just burst down QQQ, but um, yeah, he's going to pay the ultimate price. So that's going to be the end of Storm Spirit's dominating streak, unfortunately. Eh, just getting a little yeah, silly. No <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> Um, so you see Tidehunter here defend the top. That Ravage is up. So I reckon uh, when Super pops up here, they'll probably... Well, group up, maybe uh, try to make something happen. I have a feeling Ehome is feeling like their bad guys up against the wall here. They're going to group up, and uh, I, I don't know. It looks like they're trying to make something happen. They're at least trying to get these remaining Tier 1 towers, but yeah, they've got to be feeling the hurt at this point. Yeah, it's the second night time right now. Lamb, he was able to pick up one kill. I mean, he's one in five right now, though. And he's Ooh. it looks like he's building up a vanguard at the 23-minute mark. 24, actually. So it's kind of like, well, oh, when you're at that kind of disadvantage, it's, it's pretty much like a 4v5 right now. He's yeah. not really doing a whole lot for his team, honestly. I mean, he's got a little bit of nukage power on him. But really, like, when you're this far behind, when you weren't able to have a good, successful first night, even the second night right here, it's yeah. it's looking like Ehome's already at, like, a 4v5. Exactly. And this was sort of the problem that uh, Night Stalker has that we were talking about in the picking phase. When we saw him, I forget which match it was, we did see him in one of the earlier rounds or one of the earlier matches of this tournament. It was really a pretty similar result. The opposing team did a good job of preventing him from getting out of control in the first night. Then after that, it was okay great now I'm far behind and actually we saw a similar build about a 25 minute vanguard which is just a one way ticket to being a heavy paperweight instead of a carry hero yeah you gotta have that early momentum otherwise mm -hmm. you're not gonna be able to be extremely useful in any of the team fights any ganks at the very in least you just have to avoid death I mean he has the most yeah. deaths of anyone in this game by a big margin he has 5 and the next highest is 2 where pretty much everyone is all tied up here that is, oh, wow. yeah, uh, you know, I mean, he's he's doing particularly bad relative to everyone else in the game, which is not to pick on Night Stalker, but with that particular hero, you really just need to make that happen. So it's sort of unfortunate here for Lamb. But, again, they'll have another chance. It is a best of three series. It's only game one, guys, so uh, there will be at least one more match coming up after this. Should DK secure the victory here? Yeah, it's going, like... Like I said, it's going to depend. They need to kind of follow up now, but it's already looking really scary. Nature's Prophet got his Necromonicon. It's they're keeping the lanes continuously pushed in past the river. It's it's pretty brutal right now. At least King Jay's gonna be trying to set up some stacks on the ancients right now, but it looks like already DK gonna try and set something up on the Roshan, which is going to ensure a pretty safe Rax. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, this Furion is now getting pretty out of control. He's finished the Scepter a little while ago, and as you mentioned, just now picking up the Necro book. That's a scary Furion, and yeah, they're just going to go straight for Roche here. It's going to be a very easy Roche kill. He's going to fall quickly, and it's going to be totally uncontested. Not much Ehome can do. Looks like, uh, is that a smoke? Yeah, they're going to get a smoke up, mm -hmm. but again, just unfortunate. There's nothing they can do about it. Age is going to end up in the hands of Morphling. Yeah, they're, they weren't really going to be able to do anything right there, unfortunately. So, Lone Druid right now actually switching onto a mechanism right here for him not really a whole lot of huge items unfortunately i mean his farming is pretty solid 126 right behind uh storm spirit but yeah it's just now looking like dk is going to kind of follow up here with a huge push inside of either the middle lane kind of since they were able to take out that tier three mm -hmm. ehome's going to have to defend for their lives here and they're going to be able to do pretty well mmy is going to have the marching machines obviously going to push back all the creeps so mm -hmm. they have that advantage at least definitely uh we see rtk is pulling up uh, almost 3k gold here on chen i'm kind of curious about what he's going to do he has a point booster so i guess he's going to be picking up a scepter would be 
uh, my best guess, which he's surprisingly close to. So perhaps they'll wait for Chen to make that one last big item pickup uh, before they go for that mid push. Yeah, definitely. I think they're definitely going to be doing that. They only have like about 300 gold left until he does get the scepter too. Yeah. So just going to be doing a little extra farming until they do that. Yeah, that's one thing I've noticed about these Chinese teams that we've casted so far is they're very patient. It, it seems to be a recurring theme. Not, I, I shouldn't say Chinese because they're not all Chinese teams. These uh, Asian mm -hmm. teams oh, yeah. that we've been covering in this tournament. We'll, we'll, we'll correct ourselves here. Um, but they tend to be very <laughs> methodical. This seems to be kind of a recurring theme where we have games kind of like this, usually around this mark where, wow, it's really one-sided, but they still can't quite push into the base. They still play very patiently. They uh, you know, sit back and forth. They're like, oh, we'll just sit back. No problem. we got map control. And it, it makes sense because it's such a safe play style, but, oh man, it just takes so much discipline. I, I get, uh, whenever I play, I, I get very anxious. I always just want to push in, like, we're ahead, let's just end this, guys, come on. Yeah, like, yeah, and that completely contrasts, like, European teams or, yeah, or, yeah other teams like Dare. Exactly. Like, where they just completely go absolutely cra crazy aggressive. So, yeah, yeah like, they, definitely know what you mean. Yeah, they get that little lead, and they just, like, won't give any kind of breathing. They just exploit those little leads until it just keeps growing, and that snowball effect is so much more apparent here. I mean, the snowball effect is apparent in this game, but um, I guess it's not quite as showy since they're spending so much time farming up. Um, but, I mean, E-Home, they just have no map control here. We're going to see some initiation. Finally, though, they're going to go in as super kind of starts off the way the BKB going to be activated and he's going to be able to finish off Disruptor to start things off there's the Ravage from Zippo and it's going to connect with quite a few heroes Storm Spirit going to be able to pick up a double kill as Tinker falls looks like a two for nil as the fight uh, ends here E-Home with a few weak heroes going to head for the hills they're going to use the Glyph as the Creeps are actually pushing in Furion has some Treants here as well it's looking like this mid lane of Rax is going to fall up in the top lane getting pressured as well possibly two lanes going to fall in this push yeah, also, it looks like the tier 3 is going to be going down here, too, in the bottom lane. That's crazy. So, oh, wow. kind of like a 3-lane three, yeah. <laughs> three push from DK. Absolutely insane. There's a GG. Yeah, that is going to be the GG. As, as we've said uh, in the past, one lane of racks, you might be able to bring it back, anything more than that, and it's going to be very difficult. It's going to be an uphill climb, to say the least. We need to see Lone Druid get taken out one last time before the game ends. Zippo actually may fall here as he gets caught in uh, the disruption ring. Um, but yeah, the racks are kind of crippled here. DK going to be like, all right, let's not throw this too hard, guys. Lone Druid actually does buy back. So although Tinker has disconnected, Lone Druid is in it till the bitter end, looking to pick up a few more kills. The top lane uh, finally going to fall here. Yeah, Super going to finish off the melee racks. And down in the bottom, burning, doing some work as those ranged racks are about to fall. I think yeah, we have a GG on our like hands a, here. It's like a washing machine up in the top lane. That was a <laughs> weird sound. Yep. And there it is, yeah, it's uh, going to be the end of game number one. So, not a bad first game here to start off this series. Again, it is a best of three, Team DK going up against... Um, why am I drawing a blank on what their opponents were? E-Home, that's it. Uh, <laughs> um, a minor brain fart there. So yeah, the post-game <laughs> score, uh, super, going to end that game 8-6-1, and one, the highest KDA. And it was a pretty damn good Storm Spirit. It all started with that one gank on Tinker in the mid lane to set them off on the right foot. And uh, mm -hmm. since that point, Super really just kind of took off. Yeah, Storm Spirit is like able to easily like get away with like so much so many things inside the middle and going up against the uh, tinker he can just easily use his raffle to just kind of disjoint the rockets when he's like getting targeted by that so really he had a great great game yep absolutely so uh yeah we're gonna get into uh, game number two here guys sit tight and uh, plenty more dota 2 coming your way yeah, hopefully we can also fix this uh this in-game client thing.